All right, this is a quick video on uh, making accurate measurements in the lab. Uh, sometimes you want to compare two things, and a lot of times you will affect the measurement. And it's very important that you try to make sure that you don't, you don't affect the measurement when you're comparing two things. And so let me give you an example of that. Um, let's say that I want to uh, compare a, one spectrum analyzer to another spectrum analyzer, okay? So I have a, a, an analyzer here, and I have an analyzer here, and I want to compare the two. And so I'm going to be looking at a, at a, uh, a source, so I have a source, and I want to take that source and I want to split it up into two, and I want to send half of it one way and half of it the other way, and, and so the two can make their own measurements, and then we can kind of compare those two, right? And uh, so I've seen uh, I mean, I've showed you uh, uh, splitters before. Uh, I just did a, a splitter, a four-way splitter just recently. And uh, here's a nice two-way splitter. Okay, this is a, a mini-circuit splitter, so it's a very, very nice one. And so let's go ahead and use that. And so we'll take our, uh, our incoming signal and we'll, we'll put, it in the, uh, put it in the top here. And uh, then we will hook up one spectrum analyzer to this port, and we'll hook another uh, another analyzer up to this port, and uh, so we think everything's just fine. And so we take a look at the uh, at the tiny SA, and uh, it's a 300 megahertz signal. So we can see it here on the tiny SA. We have a 300 megahertz signal. And uh, we come over here to the other spectrum analyzer and we see a 300 megahertz, a 600 megahertz, and a 900 megahertz. So this is a much, uh, well, maybe, let's see, it's, it's more than that. Uh, peak search, uh, peak right. This one's at 600, so 300, 600, and, oh yeah, 300 is going to 900. I'm sorry, I put the span to 1, 000, 1 gigahertz. This spectrum analyzer will go farther than that, but it's set there. Anyway, so... Um, Let's turn the marker off. All right, so we think we're gonna be making a, a good apples and apples uh, comparison here. Well, let me, let me show you the chat for young players, maybe even not so young players. Um, let's go ahead and uh, remove the source, okay? And so all I have now is uh, nothing coming in, right? So I have nothing coming in and uh, we take a look at the tiny SA and everything looks clean. I don't see anything at all. And then I come over to the HP and I go, oh, wait a minute, there's something going on here. I can start to see some little peaks here. Let me turn on um, max hold, all right? And you can see that there's there's some signals here uh, down, you know, it's, it's, it's a good 10 dB above the noise floor. And so where, where, where is that coming from? Uh, you might say, oh, well, you have a bad spectrum analyzer, you know, it's picking up noise. Uh, it's got noise in it or whatever like that, right? No. Uh, what's happened is that the uh, splitter has crosstalk. It doesn't isolate between the two ports. I've made those measurements before. It doesn't isolate bet between these two ports. And so you really can't compare with, with, with something in the way. Uh, this will allow one talk to another. Now, the HP was talking to the to the tiny SA. It doesn't output any noise, so we don't see anything. But the tiny SA does output noise, and that noise gets into your measurement. And so you see it over here on on this spectrum analyzer. The the, the tiny SA is outputting noise. It's it's a, it's a noisy device. And so um, so if you want to make a good apples and apples uh, comparison. Uh, you can't use a you can't use a splitter, okay? And so we're going to use a device that I haven't shown before. I don't think I've shown it before. And so this is a really really nice way to do a measurement like this. Um, we're going to use what's called a coaxial relay, and these are these are uh, quite expensive new, but you can find them on the used market sometimes for reasonable prices. This one happens to operate at 24 volts, so. It's a relay, normally open, normally closed. All right, so we will put uh, one spectrum analyzer on the norm normally open. 
the other, other spectrum analyzer on the normally closed, and then we would put the source on the common, and then we can switch back and forth. So let's go ahead and do that. I should, I should have put the middle one on first so I can get my fat fingers in there. All right, put the middle one on. And yes, you should lock these down with a nice uh, torque wrench to be all accurate and stuff. But this is just a just a quick demonstration, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Um, and we will we will hook this up. All right. Okay. So now uh, we can look at the signal on the tiny SA because it's in the normally closed position. So if I, energize the, uh, if I energize the relay, then the signal disappears, and then the signal reappears over here. And if I disable the, uh, uh, the voltage, it goes away and it goes, back to the, uh, it goes back to the tiny SA. But the most important part of this demonstration, though, is what happens when I remove the source. Um, Remember, there was a bunch of crosstalk before. The tiny SA was talking to the uh, uh, was talking to the HP spectrum analyzer. So now we have a switch in there, and we come over here to the spectrum analyzer, and you can see our noise floor is is absolutely flat. All right, so there's no noise getting in from the uh, from the tiny SA. Um, so uh, a lot of times uh, splitters aren't a very good thing to use for comparisons. Uh, you really need to use something like a uh, something like a nice uh, coaxial relay.